Hey folks, it's Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. I'm going to talk about uh, levels, futures, ES, YM, and Q, and I'm going to talk through charts on um, activity on the SPY, the triple Qs, and the diamonds, DIA. I think that'll be a little bit more relevant. Um, futures have contract rollovers, and I've done activity to uh, back adjust the futures uh, contracts and how I'm doing the levels and whatnot. And I think, you know, looking at um, some of the levels in terms of, um, you know, chart resistance and whatnot, better in SPY and those kind of things. In any event, I want to do just a quick recap of last week. It was a little bit of an interesting week for me. I didn't expect such a strong move um, myself. I expected a bit a bit stronger of a pullback. Last week was triple witching. We had some China news. We had some Brexit news and whatnot. But uh, inevitably, I don't think any decisions were made. If anything, uh, the can was kicked farther down the road in, in both cases. In any event, um, this red line here was the top end of the expected move. And last week's expected move in ES was $43.50 above the close for the one week based on Friday's close uh, volatility and how options were pricing the move next week, the expected move to one standard deviation. And as you can see here by Tuesday, we were above it. We kind of hung close to it for a while, and then we were just never looked back. Wednesday was a big bullish day. We had a little bit of a pullback consolidation on Thursday. And Friday was another really strong bullish day. So for the week, we ended up making almost a two standard deviation move. And with all the options uh, you know, uh, that were below us, the large clusters that I talked about last week at 2800, 2750, 2700 whatnot uh, there were some pretty large blocks and clusters of uh, options down there I thought we would probably magnetize ourselves to them as we've done many times in the past and it just goes to show the market can do what it wants to do and um, you know we never really looked downward uh, since the beginning of the week you know we started Monday with a gap up and the entire week was really just up um, some pullbacks to the cloud, every one of them was a buy, you know, to the upside. Uh, so the trend is still very strong upwards. I have not seen any indication that the other time frame players, the much larger players that don't care about levels so much, you know, that get in and out of the market with uh, very large blocks of liquidity that they either buy, <coughs> excuse me, or dump on the market, uh, haven't really seen that volume come in yet. So the path of least resistance is upward. The thing that I think I find interesting is that the weekly expected move last week was 43 bucks. It's actually lower this week. And you would think after busting through the expected move uh, last week, we would probably have maybe a, a equal or greater expected move for this week. It's actually almost $10 less, uh, almost 20, 25% less. It's $34 up and down as priced by options um, and the expected move for options. So, <coughs> excuse me, it could be an interesting week. I think, you know, maybe it's suggesting somewhat of a consolidation, but after two weeks in a row of uh, busting through the expected move, um, I don't know that if I was a premium seller, I'd be looking to, you know, start selling out of the market premium at this point uh, because those have been losing trades and you know, I myself have lost a couple bucks buying diagonals and a few other things that I do on a weekly basis to try to collect some income, and they've been just really tough going, especially when you, you know, bust through the expected moves so much. Uh, I also had posted a butterfly trade I did, I think it was Thursday. You know, I looked for a 2800 pin. I thought we might get a pullback of, you know, 15 or so points on Friday. Um, and close the monthly expiration uh, for a nice, you know, 10 to 1 butterfly trade um, that just didn't work out. So that was a losing trade. It was a lottery ticket as I posted it. Um, but uh, very surprised that Friday's activity really saw no significant move downward or back into the range um, for the week. So that's the ES, the NQ. 
look at that real quick. It also, I will show last week's uh, levels. We did bust the expected move on that one. And we ended up, uh, it was, I think it was the strongest out of the three indexes. We ended up with a pretty bullish week. Um, you know, I know the FANG stocks had a good week. Apple in particular has had a pretty strong move after its pullback, and it's really woken up quite a bit. I think it's up uh, some $20 or so off the lows, uh, so it's had a, a pretty strong move. It was a little bit of a laggard, but once it got going, it's really started moving. And it's in so many ETFs and a few different indexes that uh, I think, you know, it, it tends, and so big, you know, it tends to carry a lot of weight in a market cap move uh, that ended up providing a lot of bullish activity. It is above, you know, this little resistance zone we had drawn in that was based on some of the tops that we had in NQ and ES. We have, in both cases, uh, punched through that a little bit. And if I look at the expected move, it is also lower into next week. We had $180 last week. And this week, the expected move, I believe, is about, yeah, it's $115, a little hard to read there. But it's uh, significantly lower than it was last week. Maybe we're going to get some consolidation. I don't know. Uh, we'll see how things go. And the YM that we've looked at, take a look at that, the expected move. Uh, YM was more contained, and I think it's because of Boeing. Uh, the uh, Dow Jones uh, and industrial, in, you know, the index that we use, the YM futures, um, diamonds are based on a price weighted index. And since Boeing, which is part of the Dow 30, is the largest price in, in it, it carries the most weight uh, as its price moves. And of course, we had all the Boeing news that, you know, pulled back, uh, the market pulled back on uh, quite a bit. And I think that's what held. YM from being within its expected move. It was only one of the three that remained within its expected move range. Uh, and I think a lot driven by Boeing. But even all of the pullbacks here were buys in that index, right? Every time we got a pullback to the cloud, you know, there was a, a breakout buy, you know, based on a trend line or however you look at making a consolidation pullback breakout trades. All of them, I think, were pretty successful. We had a $421 expected move last week that we did stay within. This week, like the other three indexes, the expected move is a little bit less. $371 up or down from the close on Friday is what's expected. Uh, if Boeing gets a pretty strong recovery week uh, and you know the other Dow 30 stocks you know stay moving like they did last week, uh, which pretty much carried the index up over and above the, the pullback in Boeing, um, we could see, you know, continued bullish action up to this expected move area and up into this uh, resistance zone. Okay, I'm going to look at the charts of SPY, and I'm going to look at this uh, because I think the levels are a little bit better to look at in a index that doesn't have, uh, you know, rollover type activity uh, in them. Let me change this to a daily chart. Let's see one year day okay so we can see you know I've had this price channel on my chart in the spy and some of the other indexes uh, and I think I put them in around 2015 in that range is when I started putting these on my chart and you can see since then it's actually held within that price channel uh, fairly well we did have one steep pullback here but it went right to the bottom of the price channel which was also the moving averages we talked about before. I think there was a 50-month moving average that we had on the price chart uh, that we talked about last week. And we did pull back to that. It was support. It was also support by the channel. And we ended up, you know, having a, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, from that December pullback, we have been working our way out. In the March month, uh, we are near the highs. We did poke above last month. So we still we do now have a higher high and a higher low on the monthly chart. It is a fairly small um, you know candle so far, but we're only halfway through the month. The volume, if it continues, is probably going to exceed last month's volume. Uh, and in this case, you know it could uh, proceed to the upside. If you look in the weekly chart, um, you'll see that I have this what I call the box uh, the box range. 
so we had a box drawn from the prior high to the low and it's a you know the box top and the box bottom we just broke out we looked above and we had a little bit of a failure we haven't yet pulled back into the box range and we're kind of in that testing area right now of that last week's volume wasn't bigger than the week before on the pullback that's not unusual but it still was a pretty decent volume uh, amount of volume for the week um, not surprising giving us a triple witching week uh, but in any event you know we do have still we're I wouldn't say we're overbought we're still in a bullish area for the RSI and both the monthly and the weekly we did get a little bit overbought we talked about the negative divergence in MACD last week you know price going up MACD going down we got the pullback last week uh, all of it was taken back really this week uh, Monday we gapped up and we never looked back the entire week the other thing I'll, I'll say on the volume profile for one year we are in a bit of a low volume uh, pocket we're at the high value area for the last year's worth of trade that's where 70 percent of the volume for last year has gone off in the spy and we have hit that high area and we're kind of stuck we've had uh, three days of consolidation you know here and I think looking forward I would think uh, looking at this box area in this consolidated consolidation range if we do get a breakout with continuation we're probably going to start continuing uh, back upwards here if I draw let me draw a some Fibonacci's here on the daily chart uh, let me just zoom this I'm going to expand on this and I'm going to draw a retracement um, on the fib levels from here to here. Oops, didn't take. I'm going to erase this one. And that one. So we do have 127% you know 1272 extension which is up near the highs that is another potential you know reason why I think we could be back testing all-time highs we certainly are testing a hundred percent pullback from this pullback here right we're back a hundred percent and we're kind of you know in a little bit of resistance we've looked up and and had a little bit of sell-off in a consolidation three-day range and I think uh, you know where we go next week Monday Tuesday could give us some indication if we're going to have continuation to the upside consolidation or maybe some pullback to the cloud this pullback to the cloud was a buy for those that uh, took the buy in that one and bought that dip congratulations it was a great trade uh, options uh, you know if you picked up long call options at the beginning of the week you were handsomely rewarded because as I said we busted through the expected move by about two standard deviations and it was uh, a pretty strong week overall so that's a look at the SPY. The triple Q's were stronger. Apple's been very strong. The triple Q's have indeed broken out. If you look at this high here, you know, we did get a close over this high. So, and, you know, the box here, if you will, would be a little bit larger. We had, you know, made a new high. We're outside the value area. We're headed potentially to go retest these highs. I'm going to draw a Fibonacci here you know the one two seven two on the cues is about 181 ish and that would be near this high volume node and we certainly could get uh, more activity um, you know up even to a 161 extension which would be eclipsing this uh, all-time high in the triple cues everything points upwards right the path of least resistance and all the indexes right now is upwards I don't see any high volume selling profit taking or any of those things uh, that have really shown up yet we haven't broken a 49 moving average we haven't broken through the cloud with a close yet and uh, even though we look a little bit overbought we know we can stay overbought you know for many many days or even weeks in a row so this inevitably doesn't really mean much uh, until we see some you know serious consistent selling that would indicate maybe a stronger pullback into this, you know, maybe these areas here, uh, you know, 38.2 or whatever, you know, pullback into these zones. 
nothing yet uh, shows me that we're doing anything like that. And the diamonds. Now the diamonds are a little bit weaker. You know, we haven't broken uh, above this high and we haven't closed above it. We did have a pullback a little bit deeper into the cloud. I think Boeing subdued this one. We are sitting at the high uh, uh, value area high for the last year's trading range. We do have a low volume node up here, which is where we did find resistance before. We just didn't get a stronger pull out of this pullback like we did in the uh, other indexes, you know, going forward. So um, I think Boeing is going to, you know, bode if Boeing continues to you know, have a little bit of continuation from its pullback. It had a pretty good day on Friday. We could see the YM coming back up into this resistance area and testing this uh, going into next week. I know we don't track IWM, but I am going to take a look at it here. Uh, IWM is probably the weakest of the three. It did pull back. It did have, you know, a little poke below the 49 exponential moving average. Uh, and, its, and its run back up has been the weakest of the three. You got the 200 day moving average here it did it I don't think it closed well you did get one close above it here but it really has held as resistance and right now we're in between you know a long-term moving average and some short-term moving averages so I you know as uh, the Russell goes sometimes the small caps uh, they can lead the market up or down uh, we did get a pretty strong move and I think it was the first mover out and continued bullish price action it was a deeper pullback and I think watching the Russell um, for what it's going to be doing going into next week is probably uh, the wisest I think we you know activity we could look at and what things might be keying off of uh, going into next week so let's see Let me restore that yeah so we, I do have the price channel we did you know we've been trading for a while up in the upper end we did have a pullback then we found the upper end of the channel again, had a pullback, and we're kind of now around that center line like we are with the SPY, and we're kind of testing around that. The MACD hasn't approached the zero line yet, but you'll see it's still on the weekly, it is sloping down. So we do have, you know, either more consolidation activity that's going on in this index, or maybe the pullback since it was a little bit deeper and hasn't really come out of it as strong. Yeah, I think, you know, there's some question mark in my mind as to what's going to go on here. This is the 50 week moving average. It did hold on as resistance and we haven't had a really decent close above that one and we're in between the 200 week and the 50 week. So I would watch the IWM and that consolidation area. I talked about the three day consolidation range in the SPY and getting a look for both of those uh, going into the beginning of next week for uh, clues as to what the trading activity uh, might be, you know, going into uh, next week's area. Hope that helps. Good luck, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.